by a judge because they feel they're going to go with your first priority and it doesn't delay because people are fighting. In the meantime, while she was with the first guardian, she just stayed there. No one, no one like questioned it because they don't really want them to be involved in child services. But that guardian ended up changing her mind and not taking this child. It was one of the worst cases I've ever handled and they went to the second person in line. But it happens. So you have more than one person. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. What if we have assets internationally and um, mm -hmm. we live here in California? Um, I know it's been touched on. No, I mean, um, basically, I don't think we have. It's a great, really good question. Like that, like we have a trust, but do we? You can can't, you we can't. Our, our, so U.S. wants to tax your estate on worldwide assets, so they'll want a piece of it tax-wise. It's includable yes. in your estate. But our legal documents, i.e. a trust or a will, will have no legal effect. I can almost say with certainty the laws of that that state, that nation, that country will control. So I'll have a client who has an estate plan here and in Canada. Because, or some, some countries have forced inheritance laws. Nothing we put in writing changes the way it goes. Um, so you need to have some sort of legal counsel in that particular country clarify that I know. Um, Canada is interesting. They will allow a U.S. trust to be a beneficiary on it. Um, and I had one, so some things you can kind of work, but I worked with counsel there because I wasn't going to say, oh yeah, let's just put it in my U.S. trust. Um, and then once again, you get into the issue of who's the trustee because we do have, it's taxed as a foreign trust, which is not a good thing, when you have a non-U.S. citizen and sole trustee. So they don't have ties with the U.S. It's a problem. Any other questions? All clear is mine. You know. Finish <laughs> your thing about what to live for. Yes. So it's just those two things. Um. I think first uh, and finally, because I um, worked with a lot of attorneys, I should be someone you like. I mean, just the very basic level. Think about it. Because I don't care about the paper. You know, to me, it's a given that it should be te technically perfect. The document or this particular plan that you've itemized or set up is going to come up in a, in a highly emotional and difficult period of time. Um, and partner at an old firm that I used to work for, I just I couldn't figure out what anyone would want to talk to him. He was the most condescending. I mean, he was just. I mean, he taught me well, but it was. It was. He was not my favorite person. Um, so I just can figure out, but some people like that. You do this, X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna tell you what to do, and they just, it felt right for them. Um, you know, uh, some people, some of my, my the, the, again, some generalization, but the higher network clients is the husband saying, well, I want you to work with my, my spouse. I'm probably gonna die first, and I want you to be able to communicate well with them. Um, some people say, well, you're too young, to so whatever it may be, just work with someone you like because they're going to be, in my opinion, you should see them as part of your key team along with your CPA and if you have a financial advisor. And they should all be communicating. When I finish up a trust, I say, do you have a financial advisor? Because I want to make sure they do their job right about helping you get these things and, they can, and, and if you give me permission, I will communicate all that to them. And, and then all of a sudden you have your team working together. Much better result if we're all then operating on our own little, you know, bubbles. Um, again, uh, communication. The final thing that I always include in every engagement I do, and it's not going to work for us with, you know, if I have uh, you know, younger kids, but family meeting is included in everything I do. I would encourage, and sometimes I don't meet with, I meet with the trustee first. So I meet with who they're naming in this key role because they, the good trustees, the people that you name, want to know. I want to know what it entails, what do I need to do, who do I contact? A common question I get is, well, where do I, it can be a really nice binder with all this paper, where do I keep it? Um, and it's not in a safe, my answer is not going to be in a safety deposit box that no one can get into because they can't find the key and they're not listed on it or the trust isn't in there. So I'm a firm believer in having a backup electronic copy. I maintain a client portal, a cloud-based system my clients can access. 
I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a drafting attorney saying, can I please have a copy of the trust? Well, I'm retired and I moved all my files and storage and the storage unit flooded. And again, private documents, so that's a good thing, but also in this case, not a good thing. You can find the trust. Um, I do not encourage my clients to pass it out to everyone because it may change. And then you will have an outdated version flowing or floating around. So the best thing that I say is, use me, have, make sure that I have an ongoing list of your current assets, the current documents, and tell the person they need to contact my firm if something happens to you because I will theoretically, hopefully, have all the updated documents, have all the financials, and also be able to tell them, here's the CPA, here's the financial advisor, here's the insurance advisor, and I can quarterback it. And again, that's just part of what I think the attorney should be doing. Um, because again, it's great to have a set of documents, doesn't mean anything if it's not the time it's implemented. So safety deposit box, which is my pet peeve, because I think there, I've had, how many times I've hired someone to drill it, it's three or four hundred dollars for that, open it up, and guess what, nothing's in there. So like everyone thinks I'm gonna find the gold congrats, or like long lost, you know, diamonds, is never the case and it's more hassle than it's worth and a lot of banks aren't doing that anymore as well too. Um, but those types of things which also brings into location lists, you know, keeping a list of where you keep important things and passwords are a whole nother thing because I don't and I'm sure I don't have a good good um, a good answer for. I was speaking at a seminar with multiple um, you know panel and there was someone on uh, security she was basically a consultant on security and I keep my list written in pencil and my estate planning binder because I think no one's going to want to read my will if they're going through my stuff. So it's there and she's like, that's so, you know, it's not secure. And I said, well, if I have it on an app and they can't come on my iPhone because that's by password, what, what good does it do? Um, but one of the things that I always know for my husband is what is your email password always, even though we update it because, and I just memorize it because I can reset his passwords, but it's a problem aren't getting actual physical statements. So we don't know what assets are actually in the estate until we start getting 1099s around tax season. And we go, oh my gosh, there's this account when, when and this account. Right, and there's always one of the, between a smooth couple, there's always one person who does everything right, and the exactly. other one kind of moves along for the right. ride. And so you need to think about how you're gonna handle passwords, in my opinion, and I don't, I honestly really don't have a great answer to it, other than Digital assets, we don't really have an estate planning, and I include it, you know, all my Facebook account, this and that, but when you clicked Amazon's user term and agreement, it, it just undid whatever I put in writing because you agreed to what their terms were. Um, so it's kind of interesting, all these things that pop up that you know the best plan in place, there's always gonna be something. I mean, you never can predict, and this week it was muffin pants. I had people fighting over muffin pans and power tools. So I could never, I would never have thought anyone really cared, but you never know what people want at that time. So one of my clients said the other week, may the last check bounce. If I don't have anything I see, then there's nothing to worry about. Um, but that's never the case. There's always something, and you never know what really may cause an interesting um, disease. So many stories to tell. Yes? Child protective services. Um, I had a neighbor once threaten to call Child Protective Services on me because my children were crying and fighting on a balcony. <laughs> I mean, it was just a grumpy neighbor. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. She's, she's 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 actually come up with another type of a lawsuit just to get back at us my boys. But um, how real is that? Uh, um, you know, I. I've had more experience um, with adult protective services, believe it or not, that comes out. Um, and, and they, you know, someone does report something that um, they're not the quickest uh, response time. So I always tell people if you really think it's an emergency, you can call the police. Um, they will respond to a 911 call and then report that to someone else. So if she really was going to take that threat into the next level, you would have the police knocking on your door, right? Um, that's probably a relatively empty threat. I just don't have the manpower. One of the things why I encourage clients to do their nomination of guardian is because in the process with child services and confirming a guardian for a child, 
there used to be um, in home visit. I mean, there was a huge vetting process for that you know, confirmation they did in home visit, make sure the person had a living space to be in, that they've accommodated them. They don't do that anymore. You still pay for a thousand dollar investigation fee, but it's right outside the courtroom in a, in a room that they interview for someone for like 10, 15 minutes. Um, so they don't really don't have the manpower, um, which is why it's always for most of the police that I've interviewed um, unofficially. So you know the last resort that they're going to turn to. Adult protective services come up more in the context in my um, recently for for elder financial abuse, um, which is. It is, it is extremely um, a big issue. Um, so, like I said, next, just getting your power to make sure mom and dad have it too. Because it's, it's a hard conversation. It's a hard well, I'm totally um, never another uh, conversation and topic for another Grandma day. Says it's going to cause her death if she tries to do it. Right. Sometimes culturally people have beliefs about talking about death. There's so many reasons why some, no one does it until they questions thank you so much for for having me and, and like I said I'll just stay back and I have a little handout so if you want to pick those up as well too which have my contact information on them and um, I appreciate you listening to me thank you